All right, guys, let me walk you through all the steps in order to get your Raspberry Pi up and running. I'm really interested in learning the Raspberry Pi. I've got a good understanding of the Arduino so far. I've been able to make use of it in my classes to show temperature sensors like a thermistor, RTD, and thermocouple. Uh, but I'm really interested in using the Raspberry Pi with something called Node-RED. So see this cool program here with Node-RED? You can uh, create uh, nodes here, and it just does all your programming. And then you can go to a, a graphical display and you can graphically display like your temperature, humidity, pressure sensors. Um, and then you can also do trending as well. So I really would like to incorporate this into my class. But in order to do that, I need to get my Raspberry Pi up and running. So if you go to uh, this page right here and if you look in the comments section below, I have uh, linked this page. This is from Raspberry Pi themselves and they've got a great introduction here on how to set up your Raspberry Pi. So this is showing the new Raspberry Pi with two uh, display ports here. And if I show you this guy right here, this is the current price. I'm sure you can get it for different prices than this, but this is from um, a Canadian supplier, so DigiKey. And I was able to get this the next day. Uh, the price is a little bit more than uh, before. I think before you could purchase a Raspberry Pi for like, 35 bucks. Now this one is the four gigabyte model. Um, and this one is basically about hundred bucks Canadian. So you can get a, a Raspberry Pi three uh, or a four. I just decided to purchase a four to get the, the newest and greatest uh, Raspberry Pi and get her up and running and use it in, our, in my class. So in, in addition to this, we need to purchase a, uh, a micro SD card. Um, I've previously used an eight gigabyte micro SD card. But I'm going to go ahead and purchase this guy right here at 32 gigs because the price right now is about 10 bucks. And this one's going to be able to hold everything that I need for all of my projects. Okay, so Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 and a micro SD card. We need a micro SD card of at least 8 gigabytes. Okay, we'll just move on to the next page here. So they're here, they're just talking about the different models of Raspberry Pi being the 4 and the 3. Um, just keep this in mind as well, that you, if you purchase the four, uh, your previous power supply may not, uh, may not be enough. Like it looks here that you need a power supply that supplies at least three amps for the Raspberry Pi four. So I, in addition to my new Raspberry Pi, I'm also going to have to purchase a new power supply for it. Cause I think my one for the, the Raspberry Pi three was, uh, was lower, but it definitely wasn't providing two and a half amps. So, um, but I'll purchase a new one with three amps just to make sure that it's got enough juice for anything that we're going to throw at it. So this micro SD is going to hold what's called the Raspbian or the, the operating system. So it needs at least eight gigs in order to hold that. Then if you go for the 32, then it'll be able to hold videos and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's see how we set this guy up. So we'll just scroll down here. Uh, it also mentions that we need to purchase uh, a, a USB keyboard and mouse. So if you don't have one of those guys, then grab it from a friend uh, or just grab a cheap USB keyboard and mouse. You'll need that to set up the Raspberry Pi initially, and then you'll be able to talk to it. Uh, I have another video where you can talk to it from your actual desktop. Then you need a, a TV or a computer screen in order to get this guy to work. And also if you purchase the Raspberry Pi 4, then like me, you need to buy yet another adapter because it has two micro HDMI ports. The three had a standard HDMI. Now this has micro HDMI. So you'll need an adapter to go uh, from micro HDMI to HDMI for your computer or for your TV screen. Okay, these are just showing us all our different cables. And this is how to set up your SD card. Now in this tutorial, they're telling us to, to use, uh, to download noobs and use noobs in order to install everything. Uh, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently and I'll give this link, uh, below. If we go here to installing the, uh, operating system, then it says that we recommend most users download noobs, which is designed to be very easy to use. However, most more advanced users uh, looking to install a particular image should use this guide. So essentially what they're doing is they're saying to go just to the downloads page and then to make use of this program, and we'll get to this in two seconds, uh, the etcher in order to just drop the image right onto the SD card without using noobs. So if we click on this downloads page, then it will drop us into here. 
Uh, and what we need to do is we need to download this guy right here, the Raspbian Buster with uh, desktop and recommended software. You're going to download the zip. Uh, I am downloading that guy. Okay, I've just downloaded it right here. So once you've downloaded that, that's going to take, uh, for me, it took a good like eight minutes in order to uh, to download. Okay, once that is uh, is downloaded, then it will be in your download files. And the next thing we need to do is we need to install this program uh, right here. Where is it? Uh, Balena Etcher. And again, I'll put uh, a, a link to these guys. This is an open source program that just flashes your uh, your drives without the use of, uh, of noobs. So in addition to all the things that I just talked about being the USB keyboard, the mouse, um, the adapter to go from micro HDMI to HDMI, um, TV or computer screen, you're also going to need to have something to, to put your micro SD card into. So uh, my laptop luckily has a, a, a slot that I can put the micro SD in, um, but you should also purchase something uh, if you don't have that in order to flash the, uh, the micro SD from your uh, computer. Okay, so once you've downloaded this Balin uh, uh, etcher, then basically what you need to do is just open this bad boy up. Okay, so open this guy up right here. Oh, and and I failed to mention pr prior to that, uh, you may want to uh, to open up an SD card formatter. So I'll put a link for this guy as well. Um, that way you format your SD card. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it takes uh, quite a bit of time. But essentially what you do is you just put your uh, micro SD into your computer. And then it sees that micro SD. Um, make sure that you are choosing to format the micro SD card rather than your entire hard drive. Um, so just be really careful on which, um, which file or which um, unit you're actually formatting. Okay, so once you do this, you can just format this. This takes about 10 minutes to format. And instead of doing a quick format, you're gonna do an overwrite format. So you're just gonna wipe everything out and format it uh, to then be able to put the Raspbian image onto there. Okay, so once you have now formatted your micro SD card, then you're gonna to come to here and you're gonna open up your Etcher program and you're gonna select the image so here I'm just going to go to uh, my downloads. So I'm just going to select this file right here and then select the, the target. So I want this bad boy right here. And like right now I have my, uh, my hard drive with everything that I've worked on uh, for years on there. So it would be a good idea to get rid of that guy off of my computer so that I do not uh, make a mistake, right? Because wouldn't that suck if you just wiped out your whole hard drive? Okay, so that guy's out of there and all I'm left with is uh, my SD card now. Okay, so I'm going to continue and I'm gonna flash this bad boy with the Raspbian image and I don't need to have any other program, it's just gonna flash it. And again, this is gonna take uh, some time and you can see here why you need to have at least um, at least an eight gig um, micro H micro SD card because uh, look at this the file size is six point eight one gigabytes. So now this is going to take some time. Looks like it's going to take about twenty minutes to uh, to drop this in. So it'll flash the Raspbian onto the the Raspbian image onto the micro SD card. Um, then it's going to double check it. And then after about 20 minutes, we'll be ready to rock. I'll pause the video here. And then it should say that we have been successful and then we can drop this into our Raspberry, our Raspberry Pi and we'll see how it loads up. So I'll be back to you in 30 seconds. Excellent, okay, so this will pop up because now the computer does not recognize the Raspbian image here. So we'll just hit cancel here. It says that it's unavailable, flash complete, excellent, right on. And now what we'll do is we'll just um, take out our micro SD card and let's put it into the Raspberry Pi and see if everything works now. All right, so now we'll take our micro SD card and we'll drop it into our Raspberry Pi. So I just have this case here and there's a slot here for my micro SD. 
I will slide that bad boy in there. And then I'll put power to the Raspberry Pi. And then it would be a good idea if I actually connect it up to my Raspberry Pi here. So as it's booting up, let's see what we got. So we got nothing. Oh, come on. There should be some, ra oh, ah, yes. Some raspberries coming up in the left-hand corner there. Oh, yes. She going almost five, four, three, two, one. Nice, excellent. So now we got the Raspbian rocking on the Raspberry Pi, and isn't this really cool? This little, like this little box. Oh, I just screwed it up. <laughs> this little box right here is now a computer, right? It's now a four gigabyte computer that's now. Uh, being able to be controlled. I can put no red on there. I can now uh, do all kinds of things with Wi-Fi. Um, all of these programs are available right out of the box. So it has the Chromium web browser. There's a couple uh, games on here as well, Minecraft and Python games. Um, what else have we got? We've got uh, programming. So that's what I'm looking for right there, the node red. Excellent. So I can run the node red uh, on my computer or I can run it on my Raspberry Pi. And my hope is that I can tie into this Raspberry Pi uh, and have the sensors on my Arduino, then sending a signal to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi then demonstrating the values on my graphical uh, user face of the node red. Excellent. All right, guys, so hopefully everything worked out for you. Um, if there's any issues, then leave it in the, uh, the comments below. And uh, hopefully in the next little bit, I'll be able to punch out a couple more videos on how to set up Node Red and get everything rock and rolling so we can see these values over Wi-Fi. All right, thanks very much for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.